guys, it's Elise and welcome back to My Cupcake Addiction. If you follow my channel, you know that I am a sucker for food in disguise. So sweets disguised as savoury or desserts disguised as things that they're actually not. It's kind of fun and today I'm going to show you guys how to make tiny edible ramen bowls. I love ramen, but ramen made out of chocolate and jello and candy I think I love even more. Let's get started. The things that you're going to need for your ramen bowls I've got some white chocolate or white candy melts and then just a couple of either dark or milk ones. We're just going to use that to colour up our white chocolate a little bit. I've got some jelly or jello crystals. I'm going with a mango but try and choose something that's kind of yellow. So a lemon, a passion fruit, something that resembles that kind of yellowish ramen broth. I've also got some pink fruit chews, some little caramels. I used a packet of Haribo Star Mix candies which incorporated literally almost everything I needed for these. They've got these tiny little gummy fried eggs which are adorable. I'm also using some green gummy bears and then they've got these little candy rings. So I'm using those in pink and then also in yellow or like a whitey colour. If you don't have access to those, the little fried eggs are going to be your hardest thing to replicate. So you can make those using just a dollop of white chocolate and a yellow M&M stuck on top. I'm also using some Pocky today and I went with pink because why not? I've got to use a circle mould today, so it doesn't have to be these plastic ones, but if you can find them, they give you a really nice shiny ramen bowl. A little bit of boiling water to make up my jello, some snap seal bags, a pair of scissors and a spoon. Let's get into it. The first thing that you want to do is make up your jelly or your jello. Now my packet tells me that I need to add 200 mils of boiling water and then another 200 mils of cold water, but I'm only going to add the boiling water because I want this to be slightly firmer than your regular cup of jelly. You want to stir that around until your jelly crystals have completely dissolved and then set it onto the side of the bench to cool. You can add a couple of ice cubes if you want to cool it quicker, but this needs to be not set but not hot for it to be able to go into our little chocolate bowls. So we need to cool that. Once mine cooled a little bit, I decided to put it into a snap seal bag, which is going to make it easier to get into my bowls in a neat way, but it's also going to help it to cool a bit quicker. So that's going off into the fridge for about 15 minutes till my bowls are done. I've melted my white chocolate to a really nice consistency and if you're having any issues with melting chocolate or getting it to a great consistency, you can check out my chocolate melting techniques video. I'll leave a link down below. And then I'm going to use just the larger of my little bowl moulds and I'm going to put in a decent tablespoon of my white chocolate and then I'm just going to use the spoon to kind of just run it up the edges. You want it to get all the way to the top and then you can actually tip out a little bit of that excess carefully as they're both going to want to go at about the same time and then pop that one off into the fridge to set. The reason I'm tipping out the excess is just because I don't want it to be too crazy thick down the bottom. This is all about the jello and the candy. You can see as I just swirl that around a little bit it actually just helps to distribute that chocolate just a little bit better around those edges making sure that my top sides are nice and thick. We'll do another coat on those bowls once that first little coat's set but we can start making all of the decorations for our ramen now. So I'm going to take my little pink fruit chews and you can microwave these for about 10 seconds just to make them a bit more pliable if they're a little bit firm to work with. Each of these is going to make a shrimp or a prawn. So you just want to stretch it out, kind of like working with fondant but sweeter and more delicious. And I like to leave one end kind of just square because it's going to go down into the jello and then pull the other one out into a bit of a tip, something like this. And then with your little tip end you can take a pair of scissors and just snip. That makes our little prawn tail so cute. Then you just want to take a knife or something sharp and I'm just going to make little lines all up my prawn tail. All right, there's my little makeshift prawn. You can kind of get curled around a little bit and sit off to the side. Now, your little ring candies, I thought these ones here were great and they look like little rings of onion. So there's a few different shades and a few different colours. And all you need to do to make them look like little onion rings is just snip off the little centre square ring bit and that's kind of eating candy, so you're in luck and then use the sticky ends to join them together. Perfect, there's our little tiny onion rings. For my little gummy bears, I'm going to use those to look like the shallots or the spring onions that go on top. So I kind of just trimmed off his little paws at the front. Sorry Mr. Gummy Bear. And then really just cut along. The great thing with the gummy bears is that they're kind of a little transparent inside. So what you get is these lovely little sort of circular, almost translucent pieces of what looks kind of like spring onion or shallot and it tastes like gummy bear. It's a win-win. I thought these little pink rings, and this could also work with pink gummy bears, look like pickled ginger. So I'm just going to cut some little sort of long strips. And again, they're a little translucent, so as you cut them off, they kind of look a little bit like pickled ginger. Super cute. And of course, my little Haribo eggs. These guys, super simple, they're already done for you. Or like I said, you can make your own using a little white chocolate and a yellow M&M. 
Finally, I'm gonna use my caramels. These are Jersey caramels, but like a craft caramel would work fine. And I'm just gonna cut off one side because I've got this white bit in the middle of mine and I don't wanna see that. And then you just wanna take it and you're just gonna stretch it out. So it's kind of like that long tofu-like shape. And when you cut this with scissors, it actually kind of gets that effect of being tofu. So I'm gonna cut two pieces of tofu out of each half caramel. That is essentially all of the little bits and pieces that will go into my ramen bowl, as well as two of my little pink pocky sticks. So we've got all that ready, and then we can check in our bowls and do our second coat. The first thin little coat of your bowl should be nice and set. So in goes another tablespoon of that white. And again, we're just gonna scoop it up all the way around those side edges because we really wanna make sure that the edges, the top edges of our bowls are not too thin or they'll crack. So you just wanna take a knife now and just run around the top edge because that's gonna give you a really nice, smooth, neat edge for your ramen bowl and it's not gonna look like it's chipped or cracked. Back off into the fridge and then they'll be ready to start filling with all of our delicious ramen mix. The most important part of any ramen is, of course, the noodle. So I'm gonna take my remaining melted white chocolate and I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of melted brown. Just add this to eye. So I only melted like three or four of those little brown candy melts. And then I'm just gonna stir it through just a little at a time to give me a really nice light pale brown. You're looking for that really, really sort of like a pale creamy type color. Set that off to the side. We may need to re-microwave it before we put it in because now it's time to get our bowls and fill them with jello. So my bowls have come out of the fridge and they should be nice and set. And I'm just going to slide them out. And you can see by using that plastic mold how shiny they are. Two little bowls. Because we don't want them rocking around, you wanna grab your two little individual melts and we're just gonna put a tiny little dollop of this chocolate onto each melt and stick them together. Kind of like a bit of a delicious glue. Get down at eye level with your ramen bowls so you can make sure that they're not lopsided. And just support them for just a second until they're a little bit tacky and they can hold their own weight. They shouldn't take very long at all to set because your chocolate that's going on top is already cold. So now I'm gonna take my jelly and it's in its little Ziploc bag and that's cool to touch but it's not cold enough to be set. Because it's in a Ziploc bag, it's gonna be really nice and easy for me to pour into my little ramen bowls. Snipping off a little tip at the end for easy dispensing. And then I just wanna to fill to less than halfway up or just on halfway up of my ramen bowls. These guys need to go off into the fridge for about 15 minutes just to semi-set and then we can do our noodling and all of our decoration. My little jello bowls are set enough. They don't have to be completely firm, but so long as that top layer of kind of skin is set, that's perfect. I'm gonna take my light brown melts and we're gonna put them into just a snap seal bag. And I haven't even remelted mine. I've just let them sit on the bench. So what I've got is a slightly thicker melted chocolate there. You kind of want it to be slightly thicker because we wanna make noodles out of this. So if it's too thin, they're all gonna blend together. We're ready to assemble. So I'm gonna cut a teeny tiny little tip, a noodle sized tip off the end of my snap seal bag. And then this is where you can have a bit of fun. Think about finger painting as a kid or just going crazy with a paintbrush. I'm literally just gonna swirl and squirrel on top, let it come up over the sides a little bit and essentially cover that first layer of jelly just with noodles, chocolate noodles. Now while those noodles are still set, I'm gonna pop in one of my shrimp and that way this little section of shrimp will actually stick into that noodle glue. And then I'm gonna break off my pocky. So my pocky, I only wanna see just these top little biscuit pieces poking out the top of the bowl. I don't wanna see any of that pink. So I'm just gonna break it off, leftovers again, about there and then I'll see how much I need to snap off to make sure that I can't see them over the top. Straight down into the jello. And then if you've got any of this pink that you can still see, just cover it up with a little noodle. A little more noodle just to make sure everything's in place. That noodle is actually gonna set pretty quickly because we've got the cold jello going on underneath. Once my noodle's set, I'm gonna get my snap seal bag of jello again and I'm just gonna gently just float some more of that jello on top. Not filling all the way, you need a little bit of space because as you add in your different candies, you don't wanna overflow the bowl. Now we can add our final decoration, so the tofu, I'm gonna put over here next to my chopsticks. And you can just rest them in because as this top layer of jelly sets, it's actually gonna hold everything in place. My egg, couple of little onion rings. And then last but not least, I'm gonna do my pickled ginger. And I'm gonna try and do that on the opposite side to my little pink shrimp, just to balance out the color a little bit. And my shallots. I'm ready for my ramen dinner or my ramen dessert. I think that might be a first, a ramen dessert. 
If you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do for more videos like these adorably gorgeous teeny tiny candy ramen bowls. If you've got suggestions of other things that you'd like me to make in disguise, let me know in the comments below. And if you guys haven't already checked out my Foods in Disguise playlist, I'll leave a link down below. Thanks very much for watching.